we owe the creation of the mountain circuit to a couple of crazy fans. Somehow, those freaks managed to find out my number and they called me incessantly. They had this fantastic idea, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, they got on my nerves so much, in the end I sent Tony over to deal with them. But instead of putting them through the mill, Tony came back with some blueprints under his arm. They'd planned out the mountain circuit down to the last detail. Racing meets crash day. That was the basic concept. All that was left for us to do was to build the track.
style of scrap was a demonstration of our biggest and best stunts. The track was just bombastic. We needed huge amounts of steel and concrete for the construction of that arena. But meanwhile, the elements had gotten too big to build them in Tony's workshop exclusively. We had to get several enterprises to build it all for us and to put it up. And that's where I saw big problems. Using outside labor involved the risk of getting busted. We had to make the transition from an illegal to a legal operation. From that point on, it was essential for the Crash Day League to become reputable. On paper, at least. Collaboration with the weapons and the construction lobbies enabled us to build gigantic arenas. From then on, we were no longer dependent on the hicks from the amateur league for knockout races. Problem was, the whole operation was shaky because it was still being financed with money from manipulated bets and what we managed to slip past the IRS. The bosses would only agree to play along on something of that magnitude if there was someone who'd serve as a scapegoat in a worst-case scenario. None of them wanted to spend his last years behind bars. 
we needed to find a straw man, someone dumb enough to take the rap just in case we were busted.
The wrecker was three tons of steel, which crushed everything that came in its path. Four 18-inch off-road tires just waiting to tear up the asphalt and mud. 413 HP lurked under the humpbacked hood, just waiting to be let loose. Damn, that thing was ugly as sin, but if you wanted to leave a wake of devastation behind you, the wrecker was the first and best choice.
Frank Meyer, a classic example of the upwardly mobile career man. He really believed he got his manager job because he thought he was good. The real reason he got it was because we had him sign his name on everything. A shipment of mines for the mine battlefield? No problem, he signed. Missiles from Russia? He signed. Before, we'd have to cover ourselves against all eventualities. Now, we had a guy who was officially responsible. He was perfect. He didn't ask any dumb questions, and he took care of the PR. What more could we have asked for?
we knew that if we gave Meyer the position of manager, there was the danger that he might realize his real purpose as a scapegoat. So we had to keep him busy, you know, distract him. We sent him to presentations, press conferences, let him open race circuits, make speeches, and we stuffed him full of money. And you know, it worked. The more he saw his face in the press and on TV, the happier he became. He was actually quite creative. The super combo was his baby. purchase of the old dump was a result of a privatization agreement. The place hadn't paid its way and devoured enormous amounts of taxpayers' money. The state was desperate to get rid of the dump, and the bosses had two very influential building speculators on their payroll who were in the lobby. They had instructions to procure money from guilds and cooperatives which would then be donated through Meyer to the Crash Day League in a large-scale deal. And then we used the money to buy the dump. Of course, the garbage was a serious problem, so the first thing we did was pour concrete over it, which formed its characteristic three hills. But don't forget, the construction of this track gave the local economy a big boost. We raised 12 million in investment capital. Who was gonna make things difficult for us?
official He comes to deal with fate and plans Don't know what's going on And we'll draw by you Go straight shot I'll warn this Cause I'll tip for you Some tell us what you really want Oh, rage to draw to gain Insane perfectors Break your plans Oh, watch your freaks pursue I'm searching for your angels Airtime was the last challenge before the final battle. Here, only the best of the best survived. It was always a magnificent sight when the cars flew through the air like birds. There always seemed to be a moment of silence when a car reached the highest point. Then it was dead quiet. And then, slow at first, and then faster, and faster, and faster, the car plunged down and plowed into the ground. After all the troubles and tribulations, everything was ready for the big finale. 
The champagne for the party was on ice, the invites had gone out, the hottest women organized, and the little briefcases for the bosses were just waiting to be filled with cash and delivered. Now all that was left was the final battle. Two drivers in a one-on-one -on -one race to decide who was the best of the best.
believe you have the opportunity to realize a dream, you have to grab it with both hands. You might have to wait a long time and struggle through a lot of difficulties, but you should never, ever give up on your dream. Never. That's the secret. From starting with a couple of wooden ramps in a workshop, we created a professional and incredibly profitable racing league. The operation practically ran itself and everyone was happy. But like I said, it was my job to get the maximum out of the business. And I was still a long way from being satisfied.